<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be, we are back and better than ever. Are we crazy? Do you think I'm crazy? No. Do you? No. Do you really? No. Of course you do not. I am crazy with calculus, and I am crazy about the fact that we are going to be talking about kinematics, part one, and we are going to use calculus to talk about and to learn about and to solve problems involving kinematics. As always, thank you, Sir Isaac Newton, and thank you, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. So, we have already talked about this. Um, if we have a car traveling at a positive velocity of 60 kilometers per hour, um, that can be modeled by V of T equals 60, this line right here. And if we want to know, <coughs> excuse me, how far they traveled for the first 15 minutes here, which is a quarter of an hour, I can just take 60 times 1 fourth, 15 kilometers, which is the area under this quote unquote curve, which is the same as the integral from 0 to 60 of, uh, I'm sorry, from 0 to 1 fourth of 60. Don't believe me? The integral of 60 is 60t, isn't it, in this case, with relation to, um, with respect to t? Evaluated from 0 to 1 fourth, I worked that out, and I definitely get 15. But we've seen that. That's how we started our journey with integration, the distance under a curve. Um, if the velocity is constantly decreasing, same thing. We can graph it here. We can find the area of this triangle. This was for six minutes, which is one-tenth of an hour. So the area would be one-half times base times height, or one-half times one-tenth times 60, which is three, which is the same result as the integral from zero to one-tenth of 60 minus 600t, which is the function that models this particular um, velocity. Okay, So those are things we know, area under a curve. Um, of course, if we change direction within the time interval, then the velocity will change the sign, and we have to add the components of their area above and below the t-axis, the time axis, to find the total distance traveled. Okay, and that's we have talked about that already. Um, we're talking about area. We need to negate it to get the distance traveled. Distance can't be negative. So a very simple example here of what we're talking, what we have is a velocity time gra graph for a, uh, for a chain, uh, a chain, a train for a train, yes? Um, it's velocity versus time in hours, okay? So to find the total distance traveled, I would just have to find the area under the curve. So I got a triangle here, I have a rectangle here, Let's see, I have a trapezoid here. I'm not doing very well with my lines. Another rectangle, or maybe another trapezoid, I guess, I could do right here. Anyway, I find the area of all these figures using the various formulas that I have, and I find the total distance traveled. I'm not going to do that for you because that's that should be quite easy. Um, but I will tell you that the area under this quote-unquote curve is 21 kilometers. In other words, if you found the area of each of these shapes here, it would come out to be 21. So, we are going to talk about displacement and velocity functions. We already know from our work with derivatives that if I take the derivative of displacement, I get velocity. And if I take the derivative of velocity, I get acceleration. Well, we're going to put that relationship to use here with integration. <coughs> Apologize for that. Okay, so clearly the integration, the integral of velocity is going to give you displacement. Okay. Um, now remember, displacement. If I'm traveling along a line um, and I go from A to B, and I end up at B, displacement is the distance from A to B. The distance, the, um, it, it's not necessarily the total distance traveled. For instance, if you started this way and had to change direction and change direction again, your total distance is longer than the distance from A to B. So we have to make that distinction. To find that, all we have to find displacement, it's just really the displacement function, um, the end point minus the starting point. Like if this were 6 and this were 2, it's 6 minus 2 is 4. Okay. Now, if we have a function describing the displacement or the position, then I just take s of t 
minus t sub 2 minus s of t sub 1. If this is time sub the end time and the start time, um, I use that function. And I can get that function by taking the integral of velocity because, again, the integral of velocity gives me displacement. Okay? Um, I don't like to give lists of steps on how to find total distance traveled. Um, I think it's a bit of common sense, but I put it on here so you can pause and read through it if you want, particularly after you see me do the example. Maybe it might help to go back and review this list. Um, the final upshot here, and I think you probably have realized this already before we do our one and only example, is that if I take the derivative of displacement, I get velocity. If I take the velocity, uh, the derivative of velocity, I get acceleration. And because of that relationship, if I take the integral of acceleration, I get velocity. And if I take the integral of velocity, I get displacement. And so the final relationship uh, with an integral, we already saw the displacement is equal to the integral of velocity. This shows velocity is equal to the integral of acceleration. Okay, so let's get down to it, shall we? A particle p moves in a straight line with the velocity function v of t equals t squared minus 3t plus 2 meters per second. Answer the following without using a calculator. Love it! How far does p travel in the first four seconds of motion. So make sure you understand, this is not asking for displacement. How far does it travel? What's the total distance traveled? Okay. Well, we have to see if there are any changes in direction. And to see if there's any changes in direction, I have to find the critical, the, uh, the points where that might happen um, to the velocity function. So to do that, I have to set, set velocity equal to zero, because that's where <coughs> there could be um, changes in sign or changes in direction. So this would be t minus 2 times t minus 1 equal to zero. So we could have a change in direction after two seconds and after one second, and I know it's in seconds because of that right there. Okay, So let's draw a sign diagram for this. Okay, so we have um, 1 and we have 2, and I'll put 0 on there, okay? And remember how we do a sign diagram? We do test points and we um, substitute them back into the function and see whether the result is positive or negative. So for instance, I, a test point here would be 0 0.5. I will tell you if I replace t with 0 0.5, the answer is positive and I choose any point between 1 and 2, say 1.5, I will tell you the answer is negative, replacing it in here, and anything greater than 2, I uh, put into the velocity um, function, and it becomes positive. So that means I have a change in direction um, at 1 and 2, and from 0 to 1, I'm moving to the right, from 1 to 2, I'm moving to the left, and after two, I'm moving to the right. Because remember, velocity gives me the direction as well. Okay? So now, I need to do a motion diagram. Okay? I need to do a motion diagram. So I can see where uh, the position is when um, time changes. I'm sorry, when, when the particle changes direction. Okay? So in order to do that... Um, I am going to need uh, the position function because I have to know at what point uh, where the particle is when it changes direction. And to find out where a particle is, I need the position slash displacement function. And I get that by integrating velocity. So I have to take the integral of t squared minus 3t plus 2 dt. And that turns out to be t cubed over 3 minus um, 3t squared over uh, 2 plus 2t plus the constant c. Okay, and this is what I'm going to use to uh, for my motion diagram. Okay, so my motion diagram. 
So we have to find the first four seconds. So from that's from zero to four seconds. And then, so we need to find s of zero and s of four. So remember, this is my position function, okay? So s of zero, replacing t with zero, is going to be c, okay? So this is a position, it's a motion diagram, so this axis represents position, okay? So at, when we start off, we are at c, the constant c, and we don't know what that is. It's okay, okay? Then, um, uh, I'll, I'll hold off on the 4. I'm going to find s of 1 because I know I'm changing direction. And I know from 0 to 1 that I am moving to the right. Okay, I'm moving to the right. And I'm going to change after 1 second. So I'm going here. And then I'm going to go um, this way. Okay, and I'll change again, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so I need to know what's going on here. Okay, so I have to find S of 1. And to save time, I will tell you that if you replace T with 1, that S of 1 is equal to C plus 5 over 6. Okay, so this is C plus 5, 6. The first place that we change direction. Okay. Then we're going to change direction again, right here. And I'm going to go straight down, okay? And to find that, where is that position, I find S of 2. And I will tell you that S of 2 is equal to C plus 2 thirds, which is less than C plus 5 six. So that's good news. So this is C plus 2 thirds. And then, I, then I'm going to turn around, I'm going to go this way, and they want to know where I end up at 4 seconds, uh, from zero, how far I've traveled from 0 to 4. So I do S of 4, and that is equal to replacing T with 4 here in my position function. I will tell you that that turns out to be C plus 5 and 1 third. Okay? C plus 5 and 1 third. Okay? So right here... C plus 5 and 1 third. Okay, and this was at 0 seconds. It's kind of weird. This was at 1 second. Then I reversed direction. This is at 2 seconds. And this is 4. Okay, so I have um, a few intervals to, um, to calculate here. The distance traveled <coughs> between 0 and 1. Okay, so distance from 0 to 1 is going to be um, the position at 1 second minus the position at 0. So that is going to equal C plus 5, 6 minus C, which is equal to 5, 6. And then what about from 1 to 2? From 1 to 2. Well, the distance from 1 to 2 is going to be um, the position to the right, C plus 5, 6, minus the position to the left, C plus 2 thirds. So that's C plus 5, 6, minus C plus 2 thirds. So that just turns into 5, 6 minus 2 thirds because the C's go away. And that is equal to, let's see, so that's 4 out of 6. So that's going to be 1 out of 6, 1 sixth. 5, 6 minus 4, 6 is 1, 6. And then I do the same thing from 2 to 4, right? So that's going to be C plus 5 and 1 third minus, uh, let's see, C plus 2 thirds. Okay, the C's cancel out. 5 and 1 third minus 2 thirds is equal to 4 and 2 thirds, I hope. So my total distance is the sum of these guys, which is equal to a grand total of five and two-thirds meters. Okay, I'm going to stop there because that ran a little long, but it was complicated, and I wanted you to have all the full information. Again, this plus this plus this is five and two-thirds. That's my total distance traveled. 
We'll pick up with part B when we come back next time. I am out! <laughs>